going to talk about the Vermont Good Sam Club and the Good Sam Club organization in general. I have here with me Stan Hodgman. He's a past state director. I have here Charlie Phelps, who is my assistant state director. And I have Liz Phelps, his wife, who is also assistant state director. And myself, I am the, the current Vermont state director. First of all, we are a camping club. A lot of people don't realize what Vermont Good Sam is. Well, we are campers, and we come all across the country to join together to camp. Uh, we are nonprofit. What we do earn in our Samborees, which we'll explain later what a Samboree is, we are more into giving than receiving. Most of our funds that we do earn, we give back um, in a form. Uh, first of all, we'd like to talk a little bit about the Samboree. Uh, can you give us some little information, Liz, about what a Samboree is? Well, the Vermont Samboree is comprised of all the Vermont chapters that get together for a very fun weekend. Uh, we usually have it the second weekend in August in Tunbridge, Vermont. And uh, during the Samboree, we have a number of activities going on. Some of them are beanbag baseball, uh, there's duck races, cow races. Uh, we have different clubs that will do fundraisers for their clubs. Some of them are uh, the breakfast sandwiches that one club does. Another club puts on, our club actually, puts on a spaghetti supper. Uh, that we've had for a number of years every Friday night. Uh, we also sell fried bread dough. One of the clubs does uh, french fries. The state will be at noontime, as the last couple of years has sold hot dogs. Uh, we have raffles. Each club has items that they put up for raffles as a fundraiser, and those are uh, always generate a lot of interest to people going in and looking and putting their tickets in for raffles. Every night we have entertainment, and uh, quite often we have refreshments. The uh, hospitality room always has cold drinks, hot coffee, tea, uh, that type of thing available for you all day long. So that, in a nutshell, is what the Samboree is. It's a good time had by a lot of folks. Liz, can you tell us a little bit about what we do for our meals? Um, we put on some meals. Well, as I said, the uh, our club does the sup the uh, spaghetti supper, and then we have a vendor that comes in and uh, is there at lunchtime for sandwiches, ha hamburgers, that type of thing. And then on Saturday night, they put on a great meal of uh, either turkey or ham, or even a combination of both, which is always a very good meal. The uh, state also does a state breakfast that uh, is free to everybody who is, is there for the, for the weekend. And uh, that is put on by the, all the chapter presidents and the state staff. And uh, that's usually a scrambled eggs, sausage, and home fries in a roll. So that's uh, always very good. I've worked on that for a number of years, and it's a lot of fun working on it. Stan, could you tell us a little bit about the chapters and uh, what they do to help with the Samborees? Hi, my name is Stanley, and I am one of three charter members for Rolling Wheels, which is here today. And we work very, very hard to raise money for different charities. We give. Probably 90% of our money earned to food shelves. We give $150 for five different food shelves to help the ones that are not as fortunate as us. We also, my wife and I, spend a day cooking the spaghetti sauce for our supper, which in turn brings us money. We have been in rolling wheels for 30 years when it was formed. It has grown, it has shrunk, it is harder now to get people to join chapters because for some reason we don't offer 
what they're looking for, video games, etc., etc. And let's face it, we as chapter members are getting old throughout the state. And, you know, at some point, even me is going to have to hang up my hat. Thanks. I really appreciate you, you, the effort that Linda puts in. I was director for five years. My first year back at Tunbridge, we had almost 400 campers. And it's not just our chapter, it's all chapters work hard for growth, and it's, it's shrinking. So if there's anything out there that can interest people and join the club uh, chapter, I hope that they, after seeing this, they step forward and do it, because their help is what we need. Thanks, Stan. Um, to continue a little bit with the chapters, uh, I'd like to name off some of the chapters uh, to see if there's any area that you might be uh, interested in joining a chapter. Um, we have uh, with us, we have the Burlington chapter, it's Champlain Valley Roadrunners. We also have Bennington, the Green Mountain Travelers. Montpelier has the Golden Domes. Randolph has the Mid-State Sams. Randolph Center has the Instigators, and White River Junction has Junction Trotters. Chester, which is this club that we are here today, the Rolling Wheels. Uh, Brattleboro has the Wyndham Wanderers. Um, if you're interested in joining any of these chapters, um, you can notify us by going to the Vermont State website under Vermont Good Sam Club. And when you bring it up, you will come up with my photo and my husband's, who are, we are the directors. And from there, you can go to any site to find out any information you need and want about Good Sam Club. Uh, I'd like to touch a little bit about um, uh, the donations and the giving that we do. That's very important in our life. And Charlie would like to speak a little bit about what we do uh, with the tabs. People don't understand why we collect tabs. Charlie? Yeah, firstly, getting back to the Sam uh we'd like to make people know that you don't have to be a good Sam member to start. Anybody and everybody is welcome. We'd like to think you would become good Sam members, but you certainly don't have to be. You can come and see if it's for you or not, and uh, we'd like to make people most welcome. But in the tab program we started uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there's some of us that are not only good Sammers, but we are Shriners. And as most people know, Shriners have the hospitals where we can orthopedic and burns, and you can go and get whatever you need at absolutely no cost to you. If you have insurance, it sometimes helps, but it's not necessary. But to get back to the tabs, uh, I think it was two years ago we started, we put a big barrel out in the buildings and uh, for people to turn in tabs. And in our second year, which has grown every year, by the way, uh, I do the tabs myself. And when I went to weigh the tabs, we had 135 pounds of aluminum tabs, which amounts to 224,000 tabs. Uh, what that has done, we have a supplier that we sell these aluminum tabs to. He pays us, obviously, money for the tabs and it's donated to the hospitals for wheelchairs or x-ray machines or games for the kids or it's all turned back into the hospitals to be used whatever they need it for. But it's turned into a very beneficial program and we appreciate those people that, that participate. And I have some people in just the second year that they save all year and they bring me back uh, boxes with thousands of tabs that they've collected themselves that different areas and uh, most of the clubs have gotten out of the chapters getting now so that they collect tabs and bring them in also so I mean it's a very beneficial program not only for the Shriners who really appreciate it but also for the good Sammers and it's just another way of more camaraderie and something we have in common that we love to share uh, could you tell us a little bit about the tabs themselves what are they so people don't get them confused with certain kinds of tabs. Um, could you describe what the tab really is? Yes. Uh, the tabs uh, have to be aluminum, which mostly are beer cans, uh, soda cans, uh, some pet food cans are, and some pet food cans are steel. 
but as we get these things, we have to run them through a processor where it takes the steel ones out, because they if you have steel ones in it, they won't even take them. So we have to separate them, which is, we've done enough now, so it's a fairly easy project. We run them down through a tray, and there's a magnet underneath, and if there's any steel tabs in it, it'll grab the steel tabs, and the aluminum ones go into a big container. And we just sell the containers by the barrel. Thank you, Charlie. Um, we also have a theme at our San Maurice. Every year the theme changes. This year it's our hometown heroes. And we are celebrating um, those who really don't get enough thanks through the years. Now, a lot of it we take for granted. Um, could you tell us a little bit, Liz, about what we actually are going to use for uh, hometown heroes and honor? Well, we're honoring the, um, the, you know, the police, your fire departments, your EMTs, uh, all branches of the armed forces. Uh, these are the people that are serving us 365 days a year, and they really do not get the thanks that, that's deserved. Um, also, uh, to make a note of that, um, on Friday, the weekend of our Sambury, we are asking that everyone wears red. It can be a t-shirt, it can be a hat, but we are asking that you wear red all day on Friday um, in honor of our military. Uh, one of the other things that we probably should touch on a little bit is joining these things, being part of these things. I have here the history of the Good Sam Club. I'd like to just read a short, uh, a short bit of this uh, information. It was a man by the name of Raymond Jones of Utah. An RVer often found himself stopping to assist fellow RVers who were having trouble. In 1966, Jones wrote to Art Griffin, then the publisher of Trailer R News, since merging into Trailer Life magazine as we know it today. Uh, Griffin advertised this in July 1966 that he would be able to furnish a good Sam Samaritan decal if enough people were interested. Well that took off and today we have the symbols, we have everything that goes with it and that's where the name Good Samaritan came from and that is what we're here to do. We are here to help people in need of any area in their life. If we can help, that is our goal. We have no other uh, uh, goals to follow except that we are here to help. And in that small phrase, there is a Good Sam pledge. And I'd like to read that to you because this is what we stand for. This is who we are. This is why we're here. And this is why we do what we do. As a member of Good Sam Club, I pledge to give aid to others in need, respect nature and the environment, give back to the community and those less fortunate, treat others with dignity and respect, and wear a smile like Good Sam and Good Samantha's, and promote the pledge of the, Go of the Good Sam Club to others. Uh, Liz, maybe you could touch a little bit on about what we do at our campouts as chapter members. Okay, sure. Uh, our club, the Rolling Wheels, is, meets on the second Saturday, the second weekend, excuse me, of every month, and uh, we have usually somewhere between 15 and 22, 23 rigs that will come camping for the weekend, and usually we do different activities, we'll have games. Our club seems to base around food an awful lot. Uh, as of this morning, we had a club breakfast for everybody. We had sausage and home fries, French toast, and pancakes. Uh, this afternoon, tonight, we're going to have a potluck supper. Uh, sometimes we play beanbag baseball. We usually, have, we almost always have the fire going. We're sitting around the fire and talking. And the thing that has always amazed me about our club, and I think probably all the other clubs in the state are the same way, is the, uh, the, the diverse background of our, of our members. 
Uh, we've had a lot of people that were business owners and were business, and we've had a lot of people that work in shops uh, and everything, and everybody get, just gets along great. We always have a really good time. We also, during the winter months, when we can't camp because it's too cold, we get together the second Saturday of each month and have a potluck supper and uh, have a chance to keep in touch with everybody all throughout the year. Our club, I think, is pretty typical of most of the clubs in the state. Uh, they all have their own activities, but it's always a good time. No matter what the weather is, we always have fun. Um, Charlie, what do you think about, uh, just in general, uh, being together with the groups that we do get together with? Um, don't you feel that the camaraderie is there? We just love each other and we enjoy being with each other? Most definitely. I think that's one of the biggest reasons that we all stay here, if you will. Uh, something I'd like to add, touch on briefly what Liz was talking about. Uh, Thanksgiving, we always have a... Uh, Thanksgiving supper. Thanksgiving supper, but it's it's the with turkey uh, dressing. Fixings, yeah. it, it's all the turkey and all the fixings at uh, Thanksgiving, and also at Christmas time, for the little kids, Santa Claus comes and the, we have presents for the kids, and then again we have another sandwiches and, and lighter stuff at Christmas time because the party takes up most of the time. But anyway, that's enough about that. Fun. Oh, we have a lot of fun. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, there's always at least one card game going, be it cribbage or 313 or dominoes or there's always plenty of things to do for, for people to keep them busy and just sit around the fire and chat. That's where the camaraderie comes in and, and I personally, that's one of the things I enjoy the most. Is there anything more, Stan, you would like yeah. to add? I'd like to mention just for a moment about beanbag baseball. We undoubtedly probably have the most fun of any state, I don't care which one you want to talk about, playing beanbag baseball. We have people come as far as Florida and Maine to play beanbag baseball in Vermont because we don't argue. If you're out, you're out. If you hit a home run, you hit a home run. I tell you, it's one of the most fun games of beanbag baseball that goes on in New England. Uh, Liz, could you explain to us a little bit about uh, if someone wanted to come to one of our chapter meets, uh, what, what, what could we do? You, the, uh, you'll find on the website the club president's name and just get in touch with them. They will tell you where we're meeting next and the dates and we would love to have you come as our guest for the weekend so that you can get a feel of, of what we do and if it is something that you think that you would enjoy belonging to. We would love to have you. If you would go on to the web under Vermont, spell out Vermont, goodsamclub.com, you will get all the information that we've talked about today and more. If you'd like to call myself as director, or email me, I will answer you promptly. Webmaster Matthew Adams will have the registration forms up as soon as we get our plans going for next year. So keep looking for the registration forms to sign up to come to our Sambury, uh, which will be on the 7th and 8th of August, which is Friday and Saturday. If you choose to come early, Bird, you may come in as early as the 4th, 5th, and 6th. And we'd love to have you come early. We have things to do, and you'll have a great time. See you in 2015. Thank you for uh, my guest. <laughs> Put the, uh, you should stand there and put your hand out. You yeah, know, make it look